Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you remember what happened last week and where the hell we are today? Well, the last time we did an episode, we were in Ezekiel chapter 15. Sure as fuck were. And in that episode, God was talking about vines. And their worthlessness. And their worthlessness. Yeah, it was It was kind of, I don't know, I, I wasn't real happy with, I mean, like, I like vines. Vines are fun. You Fucking know? vines. Yeah, I was thinking about it afterwards. You know, there are some good applications for vines. You could, like, use them to weave you know, baskets or or there's things you could do with them. But God was apparently, according to Ezekiel, comparing vines to, you know, like the ability for them to not have any purpose. Yeah. Sorry, they, I don't know. I, I might have lost my thread of what I was saying there. They don't make fire good. Yeah, they don't. Well, no, you they said they, they burn. They burn just fine. But you can't. They don't. You, they can't make pigs out of them. You can't, you know, use them to build buildings and stuff like that. So they're they're worthless, but then God's gonna like destroy the people just like the vines, and in their worthlessness, and they're gonna make them even more worthless. Mm, mm. And I thought that was a really shitty way to because uh, I like talk ashes. about your people that you like and stuff. So ashes are awesome. I sure yeah. So anyway, that was Ezekiel chapter fifteen. It was, which means that today we're getting into Ezekiel chapter sixteen. All right, let's do this. Okie dokie. All right, here we are hopping into Ezekiel chapter 16. Okay. And this is the longest chapter of Ezekiel. Fun. So I wanted to give some notes beforehand. Okay. okay. All right. This chapter has been referred to as an Old Testament parable of the prodigal daughter. Okay. As it illustrates an ungrateful Jerusalem in contrast to God's enduring love to her. <laughs> It's also. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And that's and that's he loves, that's fucked. That's a fucked up way to describe this because I no her fuck that shit so much. No, 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 he no, does. No, forever. Not at all. Yeah, no. No. Um, this chapter is often linked to Ezekiel 23, which we're not at yet, but that chapter also deals with two daughters, symbolizing the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Okay. okay? All right. Yep. And as I said, this is the longest chapter in Ezekiel. And the story deals with Israel's sordid, loathsome character so that God's infinite abhorrence of her sin may be clearly seen. He's going to trash them. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. And More so than to, usual, huh? Yes. Oh, it's, okay. Listen to this. It's so bad that according to one rabbi in the Mishnah, the chapter is not to be read nor translated in public. Wow. It's dirty. Wow. It's dirty AF. That's, okay? that's exciting. That's why I, I, think, I like that. That's why I think you're probably going to love this chapter. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So we're going to talk now about how much Jerusalem is a dirty whore. Sure. Yeah. Okay? Sounds great. All right. Now that I've set the stage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Chapter 16. The word of the Lord came to me. Did it. As again. It does. As it does. Yeah. Son of man. Yeah. Mere human. Yeah. Worm. Confront Jerusalem with her detestable practices and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. <laughs> this is like, this, this reminds me of what is your uh, and your uh, your uh, this reminds me of that taunting session in Monty Python. Yes. Your mother smelled of elderberries or whatever the hell it, you it's know, all that. The you know. OG Yo Mama <clears throat> joke. That is hilarious. Yes. On the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean, nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in cloths. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field 
For on the day you were born, you were despised. So wait a second. God is responsible for all of humanity, right? Mm-hmm. And he's saying that the day they were born, which mm-hmm. he's, I mean, he's referring to Jerusalem, right? Mm-hmm. As a whole kind of. Yeah. But these are his people. Okay. He's saying he's saying that from the day they were born, mm-hmm. they were despised. Yeah. Like he has, he has complete contempt for this group of people. Yeah. Even though they are his chosen people. Right. That, that's just crazy. Yeah, basically crazy. what he's saying is that this ancient nation began life as a hated mix, a hated people of mixed blood and mixed culture. And it was like an unwanted baby girl thrown out at birth and left to die. Jesus. Well, yeah. that, that, that's but we, we've talked about this before, too, like the whole mm-hmm. story of Moses and everything mm-hmm. that probably never happened. Right. Like they were actually. Probably just descendants of Canaanites and, mm-hmm. and Amorites and, and the whole nine yards, and right? Hittites and this and, is kind of touching on that, actually. Yeah, yeah. Like, yes, that is what they are. They are descendants of Canaanites and Amorites and, and the whole nine yards. Yeah. So, like. He's like, you nasty fucks. But who cares? Right. Right. Like, I mean, if you want them to be better, teach them to be better. If you, you're you a fucking God. Do, do fucking God shit. You right? know, like, be a God. So, he, he carries on. He says. Then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood. And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, live. I made you grow like a plant of the field. You grew and developed and entered puberty. Mm. Your breasts had formed and your hair had grown. Yet you were stark naked. Okay. Later I passed by. And when I looked at, so he, he admits that he left her. Yeah, right. You know, Mol- left her to yeah. her, left a naked chick on well, her Well, he wasn't there when they were born. Apparently, he's not there later. Like, right. he's not paying much fucking attention, yeah, apparently. he's just walking the earth, doing his God thing of ignoring everything. Yeah, yeah. Later, I passed by, and when I looked at you and I saw that you were old enough for love, I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your naked body. Mm. I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you, declares the sovereign Lord, and you became mine. I bathed you with water and washed the blood from you and put ointments on you. I clothed you with an embroidered dress and put sandals of fine leather on you. I dressed you in fine linen and covered you with costly garments. Okay. Like, to me, it's like, thank you. I'm not sure I asked for all that shit, but okay. Right. Fine, I mean, I, I guess he's he's saying that at some point he tried to take the reins and teach them, like, I, I'm giving you the tools to be better or something like I that, right? I waited until you were an adult to step in I and guess. teach you. Yeah. But it, it, to me, smacks a lot of what the whole Jesus thing is. Like, I died for your sins. Like, dude cool i guess but i didn't ask for all that right like i'm right. i'm just over here trying to live yeah like no no need to step in please unless it's you know for good yeah do, do some good let's see you do good right i adorned you with jewelry i put bracelets on your arms and a necklace around your neck and i put a ring on your nose earrings on your ears and a beautiful crown on your head so you were adorned with gold and silver you know material things yeah Right. I, I decorated you and made you pretty in material things. Because you weren't perfect the way I made you. Right. According to God. Yeah. Or right here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you were an ugly piece of shit. Yeah. And I had to make you pretty you with. Were, you were just weren't good enough. So. Yeah. I had to do. I had to make you better. Mm-hmm. I guess. I had to decorate you with fine pieces of material. This isn't objects. saying much for God. Right. God is, you know, supposed to be able to be this perfect being that can create perfect things. And Mm -hmm. so the things that he created were by his own definition, not perfect. Right. And he's having to, you know, make them better apparently. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to feel grateful for that at some level, I guess. Thank you for putting jewelry on me. So I'm not ugly anymore. I guess. Yeah. Like I didn't feel ugly till you told me I was. Yeah. Your clothes were a fine linen and costly fabric and embroidered cloth. Your food was honey olive oil, and the finest flower. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen. I became very beautiful after you decorated mm, me. Yeah, yes, right. Thank you for that. Yeah. And your fame spread among the nations on account of your beauty because the splendor I had given you made your beauty perfect, declares the sovereign Lord. Mm, yeah. Okay. You were ugly, but then I came along and put a crown on your head. I made you pretty. 
<laughs> fuck you, you arrogant fuck. <laughs> but you trusted in your beauty and used your fame to become a prostitute. Oh, you okay. lavished your favors on anyone who passed by, and your beauty became his. I mean, this is him talking about them worshiping other idols mm-hmm. and other gods and, and mm-hmm. yada, yada, yada. Yep. And But again, I'm going to go back to the things that we've constantly talked about, and mm-hmm. that's that there is no point at which he sends a reliable witness to himself, mm-hmm. right? He, he refuses to speak up on his own behalf. Right. He refuses to teach anyone how to operate himself Mm -hmm. he instead sends unreliable people to teach these things for him and hope that other people take these messages in and Mm -hmm. and accept them moreover um on a very um esoteric level he's slut shaming yeah and i'm like sorry i can worship who i want that that's free will i can fuck whom i please that's free will yeah and you know? and yeah if you if you aren't as powerful and as as great as you say you are then there's no reason for us to worship you in the first place mm-hmm. if you are that great then we would know to worship you i would think and if i want to fuck other people i can fuck other people definitely you're not yeah, the no matter how fucking great you are yeah <laughs> You took some of your garments to make gaudy high places where you carried on your prostitution. Mm -hmm. You went to him and he possessed your beauty. Uh, Let me rephrase that for you, God. I fucked and nobody possessed me. Right, right. Because I'm a free agent and I can do what I want and nobody owns me. Right. I'm no one's possession. Yeah. You also took the fine jewelry I gave you, which apparently came with strings attached because uh, you're going to complain, I see, after this comma about what I did with them. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, did you give them or did you loan them? Right, right. The jewelry made of my gold and silver. Why does God have gold and silver? I don't know. Why does God need gold and silver? I I really don't. I don't know. I feel like I feel like he's complained about having gold and silver as, Mm -hmm. you know, things in the past. So maybe I'm wrong, but I'm sure we could find a place where he wanted people to get rid of their gold and silver because, Mm -hmm. you know, it's supposed to be just about him. Mm -hmm. So it's funny that they are things that he is pushing out there as um, adornments that are good for his people. Right. Which is kind of funny. Right. Uh, You made for yourself male idols and engaged in prostitution with them. Okay. It almost sounds like he's talking about using the gold and silver to make sex toys. (laughs) (laughs) Look, sometimes women just need batteries. That's all I'm saying. There you go. Yeah. Right. And you took your embroidered clothes to put on them and you offered my oil and incense before them. Why is everything yours, yours, yours? Yeah, I don't know. Selfish. Right? Also, the food I provided for you, the flour, olive oil, and honey I gave you to eat, you offered as fragrant incense before them. Yeah. um, But, again, you know, you didn't really make it clear what you were and who you were to these people. And they were just worshiping whoever felt like was going to help them out. So, Well, not only that, but... It, I think it's really silly to say that you gave them the shit that grew in the land. Right. Like, it grew in the land is why they went there. Yeah. You know what I and mean? moreover, they were probably responsible for making those things themselves right. grow more abundantly, too. So, right. I mean, I feel like that would be kind of a cut on their ability to help themselves, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. This is what happened, declares the sovereign lord. And I took your sons and daughters whom you bore to me and sacrificed them as food to the idols. Was your prostitution not enough? You slaughtered my children and sacrificed them to the idols. Hmm. And I mean, yeah, don't do right, child sacrifice. Right. No, yeah. That's, we, a bad. And that's the one thing that we yeah. have agreed on that was horrible. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't horrible because it was another religion. It was horrible regardless who was doing it. Right, right. And... I, I don't care what religion you are. Don't sacrifice your children. Yes. Yeah. I think that we can all agree on that, hopefully. Hopefully. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know that there are certain sects of Christian who like to think that atheists eat babies. Right. I'm here to tell you, y'all were eating the babies way more than I ever was. We don't eat babies. No. 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 We don't. We don't. 
Okay. I mean, your your own God is telling you that y'all ate babies. Stop it. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I I never did any of that. So. Okay, I win. <laughs> In all your detestable practices and your prostitution, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were naked and bare, kicking about in your blood. Woe, woe to you, declares the Sovereign Lord. In addition to all your other wickedness, you built a mound, a mound for yourself and made a lofty shrine in every public square. I thought that said pubic square at first. <laughs> <laughs> at every street corner, you built your lofty shrines and degraded your beauty, spreading your legs with increasing promiscuity to anyone who passed by. Oh, wow. Yeah. Stop spreading your legs yeah. and promiscuity. Right. Don't do not do the sex yeah. with other people. No. Only with me. Right. Like, Gross. You engaged in prostitution with the Egyptians, your neighbors with large genitals, and aroused <laughs> my anger with your increasing promiscuity. What? I just, what? <laughs> the enlarged genitals, that's, uh, yeah. I okay. mean, is that, I'm not sure what to say about that. So their, their neighbors had, had large genitals, big apparently. Dicks. Yeah, yeah. And God's like, don't go fuck people with big dicks. Right. And I'm like. I don't, but it was just this this book Ezekiel where God was flashing His dick to Ezekiel like multiple times. Mm -hmm. So I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like He's kind of, you know, in on the whole, you know, dick thing. It, <laughs> nothing, nothing gives like little dick energy. Like talking about how other people have right. Dicks. Yeah, maybe God's insecure. Right. That, that that must be what it is. I mean, he's specifically calling out Egyptians as having large genitals. Right. That's weird. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's in the Bible, and that's weird. It feels um, it feels similar to people um, today, like other cultures. They'll say that they have big dicks sometimes. Right. You know, I mean, and it, and it feels like it's a, it's a cult. It's somehow a cut on those other cultures they somehow mean it as an insult at the same time that it's recognizing an actually positive trait question right. mark right right but i'm like but it's somehow meant as an insult it, in some it, degree it's it some degree it, it's supposed to mean like if, I, if you guys are known for having big dicks then you're probably closer to animals than humans i think is what it's supposed to be right and or, the, like, or the sexual promiscuousness of of that right, you know right. something, something along those lines yeah. is what it's boiling down to i think and i'm so. like no right they're the same as us they people regardless of the size of their dick get driver's licenses yes and, you know can vote and you know correct <laughs> tie yes. their shoelaces right right so I, I don't know what you're trying to say there, but it's weird. It is weird. Let's just not talk about people's dicks, maybe. I that don't would know. be ideal, I think. Like, I you know, know I know that I talk about people's dicks on sure. this podcast. R I well, do. I mean, but to be fair, the Bible kind of brings it up a lot. Right? Like, That's I mean, what I'm getting There's at. a lot of dick in the Bible. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, it. it is everywhere. It Fucking is. dick is everywhere. And now, specifically, specifically. Yeah. They're talking about large you know, dicks. You know the Egyptians; they got those big dicks, and you went and <laughs> fucked them. Like, yeah, I did. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if I was Israel, that would be my response. Sure. Yeah, I did. Right? Goddamn right. right, I did. Yeah. So I stretched out my hand against you, you know me, God, uh -huh. and reduced your territory. I gave you over to the greed of your enemies and the daughters of the Philistines, who were shocked by your lewd conduct. Mm. Were they? Okay, I I guess. Were they I mean, that's what he's saying. So I guess they were shocked. I don't know. I don't think they were shocked. No. No. Okay. No. All right. You engaged in prostitution. Sorry, I have the hiccups. I just thought I put that out. <laughs> you engaged in prostitution with the Assyrians too, because you were insatiable. Oh man! Damn, yeah. she's a lusty prostitute. Right? Yum yeah. yum. And even after that, you still were not satisfied. <laughs> Literally, you just called her insatiable. Yeah. Why would she be satisfied if she was insatiable? Right, right. I mean, and, to, and and again, I'm gonna I'm just gonna point this back out. But God created these people. Mm -hmm. These are God's people. Yeah. And He is 
angry at them for being who they are, apparently. Right? So He's I like, mean, I hate it when my kids are lusty whores. Ugh. Well, and I, that's part of what makes me so angry is that he is railing against quote unquote his own people, right? These are these are his chosen people and he goes and yells at them all the time for being the people that they are. Right. And he doesn't do anything except for send really, really shitty messengers mm -hmm. to tell them otherwise, according to the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, and and they're supposed to change based on what these idiots are telling them, even though there's a lot of other idiots telling them different things. Right. Like, it, it makes no fucking sense. No, no. And anyway, you don't tell somebody that you love them by telling them how much you hate them. Right, right. Gross. Yeah. Then you increased your promiscuity to include Babylonia, a land of merchants. But even with this, you were not satisfied. Israel was quite the lusty whore. I guess. Well, you know, part of the reason that they ended up in Babylon and Assyria is, and Egypt, for that matter, in, in large part, was because God drove them away. Right. According to God, according right. to the Bible, according to the yeah. you know canon, you know, yeah. like that's that, that's why they ended up there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the practices that are now part of Christianity came from those other cultures because according to the Bible, God drove them there. Right. It's crazy. I mean, the whole thing's nuts. Mm -hmm. Like we believe things, but like not we, not you and I. Right. But Christians and 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 Judaism believes things that are part of other cultures because and again according to the bible god drove them there right and made them part of those cultures yeah it, it's just it's nuts. all backwards it's yeah. so backwards right i am filled with fury against you declares the sovereign lord when you do all these things acting like a brazen prostitute I mean, I say better a brazen prostitute than a sneaky one. Right, right. Yeah, for sure. When you built your mounds at every street corner and made your lofty shrines in every public square, you were unlike a prostitute because you scorned payment. So even as a prostitute, you weren't a prostitute because you fucked you didn't, for yeah, free. I was gonna, yeah, like that. That's even nastier. So you can't really call them a prostitute. But that's even worse, he's saying. You didn't, not only were you a prostitute, but you weren't a prostitute because you wouldn't even take payment. You were fucking everybody for free, you nasty hoe. That, that's what that's, he's saying. I mean, this is just, you know, this slut is like shaming slut shaming. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is horrible. You adulterous wife. You prefer strangers to your own husband. You know, it would, so again, we're talking about God here, right? So we're talking about someone who has not proven that they exist to any of these people. Yeah. And and so it's it's hard to cheat on a quote unquote husband right. that is not present. I'm sorry. Basically, it's like Israel married a truck driver who didn't just go <laughs> on the road for like a year, but left for literal centuries. Yeah. And so then came home and was like, "What's going on? You didn't wait." And they're like, "I thought you were dead, asshole." Right. You didn't send a postcard. You didn't call. Nothing. Yeah. You were gone. Yeah. The fuck. Right. Yeah, I fucked. <laughs> I was I was looking for some other, you know, dude. I mean, and technically, with the, the amount of time that God is gone, you could, I think, legally have him um, pronounced dead. Right. In any society that actually has some form of, it you know, sounds reasonable like, law based on how long like you wait on somebody. It sounds like that's what Israel did. Right, declared yeah. him dead because he was missing. As well they should have. Right? Yeah. So they were no longer married to you and were free to fuck. Exactly. Whomever they so please. That's how I see it. And you coming home and ranting and raving and calling them names doesn't really make your case look good. No, it does not. All prostitutes receive gifts, but you give gifts to all your lovers, bribing them to come to you from everywhere for your illicit favors. I just see them as generous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you're making it to where it's like, how dare you fuck? How dare you not charge for fucking? How dare you fuck and give gifts? Right. Yeah. Like, what? I can I can make butter for somebody and I can fuck them. Yeah, sure. You know? Right. Get away. Yeah. So in your prostitution, you are the opposite of others. No one runs after you for your favors. You are the very opposite for you give payment and none is given to you. Hmm. Okay. So I'm like, please fuck me, please. So you mean, wait, so I'm the man hiring right. a prostitute is right. what I'm hearing? So yeah. it's okay for men 
to hire prostitutes, but not for women to hire prostitutes. That, that, that tracks with a lot of the things in the Bible. Because that's what so, I'm hearing. Right, yeah. She was like, I need sex. Somebody come fuck me. Right. Right? Yeah. And paying for sex. Yeah, yeah. So that would make the other countries the prostitutes, and that would make Israel the customer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right? That sounds about right. Yeah. So, I mean. I guess. Sure. I mean, I, the, this whole this whole exercise is of of discussing I'm just it this way. To play the game. No, I I know, but it's it's absolutely absurd. Because you notice he's calling prostitute or he's calling Israel a woman, right? Right. If right. he was calling Israel a man, then the man would be praised for all the sex that he got. That is true. Right. That is actually true. Yeah. Yeah. And he would be like, "Damn, and you got it for free." Fuck yeah, you're winning. Right, right. But no, he's on purpose calling her a woman and is like, you are having other people. Because misogyny and yeah. the Bible. Yeah. And it's, you know, just ever and, and ever present as part of the narrative. See, that's why I'm playing the game, because it's a bad fucking analogy. Right. You know? No, it really is. It really is. Therefore, you prostitute, hear the word of the Lord. He's like, you fucking whore, listen to me, you bitch. Right. Okay? Yeah. That always makes me want to mm. sit up and listen. Yeah, no. Like, that instantly makes my eyebrows shoot all the way up to the <laughs> top of my head and be like, excuse you? Right, yeah. You called me what? Yeah. I'm not listening to a goddamn thing you have to say. Yeah. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you poured out your lust and exposed your naked body in your promiscuity with your lovers... And because of all your detestable idols, and because you gave them your children's blood, therefore, I am going to gather all your lovers with whom you found pleasure, those you loved as well as those you hated. Okay. And you're going to give me the people I hated? Yeah. Oh, what, that's dumb. Where, where's he going with this? I will gather them against you from all around and will strip you in front of them. And they will see you stark naked. Okay, so this this is a reference back to like him destroying Jerusalem, right? Yeah. So like essentially yeah. we're going back to that mm -hmm. where he's going to lay them bare in front of all the neighbors because and they're he's trying to of, punish them and, and yeah. show them as an example of what not to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just uh, more, it, this is a different way of saying the exact same thing we've been saying right. throughout this whole book thus far is that Jerusalem's fucked God's going to send people to kill them. It's going to make them look horrible in front of their neighbors. Mm -hmm. And he's going to exile them forever and ever and ever. Amen. Whatever the Except fuck Except now ever. we're um, slut shaming and right. making fun of women's bodies and stuff. Yeah, because why in, not? Let's just process. throw in an extra layer of shittiness on top of the shittiness that we already have. Exactly. Like, let's exactly. just make sure that we disparage women to the nth degree because mm -hmm. why not? We can. It's the Bible. That's sure. what we do here, right? Exactly. Yeah. Because, honestly, you're going to strip me down and shame me in front of people. Yeah. Like, the only one that should be ashamed is the person that's stripping me. Right. Regardless of what I've done, I don't deserve to be stripped down. Well, Fuck you. And that's, I, I think, the biggest argument that I have about this whole religious idea that is God and the Old Testament thus far is that God needs some fucking therapy. Like, God is not correct. God is obviously a human male in the, you know, the year, whatever, thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. writing this bullshit because they have no concept of what it means to actually be an equitable human who right. treats people with compassion and empathy. And like, it's none of that is there because right. they don't have the capacity for it at that point in time. So of course the God that they create is going to reflect that. Right. And, that wouldn't be problematic because, sure, they all did that back then, right? The problem is that, no, but we still are having some people believe that way to this day and enact laws around it. And that's where the, that's why we are here railing against this because mm -hmm. these ideas are still in that same fucking book. Right. And they're still being used to destroy people today. They're still being used to enact judgment on other human beings today. And these are ideas that are so far removed from what should be in a progressive society that they don't even hardly deserve comment except that they still exist. In the year 2024, we should 100% across the board be reading this and laughing at it. 
at its quaintness, at its oldness, at its ridiculosity. Right. And instead, you and I are reading it and making fun of it and laughing at it. And other people are just looking at us like we're the dum-dums and telling us, you just don't get it. And your heart's not open. Yeah, and God bullshit. has a plan. And it's justified because dot, dot, dot. And that's the fucking problem. Right. Because that, we that, should, is, that is exactly the problem. We should all be looking at this with the ridiculousness that it deserves. Right. Read it for what it is. It is exactly stupid. what it is. It's fucking stupid and childish and backwards and sexist and racist. Right. And we wonder where this stuff stems from in our society. And it's right there in front of us. Yep. I will sentence you to the punishment of women who commit adultery and who shed blood. Oh, okay. no, not period not women. Not that, yeah, oh. it's rough. I will bring on you the blood vengeance of my wrath and jealous anger. The blood vengeance? What's the blood vengeance? I don't know, but it sounds bad. It doesn't sound good. Not that anything he says is good, but, right? you know, okay. Uh, blood you, vengeance. You're going to draw blood, or are we talking about, like, I, I don't know. It sounds know. like some say, sort of magical rite or something, you know? I don't know, because when he said shed blood, I instantly was thinking menstruation. But then he was like, blood vengeance. And I'm like, hold on. Are we talking about period cycles? Or are we talking about, like, war with swords? Well, there's a lot of symbolism other? in this chapter. So I'm sure there's a, a bit little bit more to it than that. But, you know. All right. I will bring on you the blood vengeance of my wrath and jealous anger. Then I will deliver you into the hands of your lovers, and they will tear down your mounds and destroy your lofty shrines. They will strip you of your clothes and take your fine jewelry and leave you stark naked. Wait, God, I thought you already stripped me naked. <laughs> <laughs> they will bring a mob against you who will stone you and hack you to pieces with their swords. Jesus Christ. That sounds fun. Thank you, Lord. I love Look, you. Look, I know we're, awesome. I know they're going to get taken over and, and con conquered, but like hack you to pieces. Right. Those were like literally the words hack you to pieces is in the fucking Bible. Right. That, God that is talking to his own people. Right. Allowing it to happen. Yeah. Thank you, God. That's not... What the fuck? I praise you like I should. You are awesome. <laughs> they will burn down your houses and inflict punishment on you in the sight of many women. I will put a stop to your prostitution and you will no longer pay your lovers. Again, it wasn't my prostitution. I was the customer. Right, yeah. They were the prostitute. Exactly. Then my wrath against you will subside and my jealous anger will turn away from you. I will be calm and no longer angry. Oh, wow. Just has to hack you to pieces first and uh, yeah. embarrass the fuck out of you and kill you a lot. I and just have to strip you and make you do the naked booby dance in front of everybody. Yeah, so and then I'll love you again. Right. Because you did not remember the days of your youth, but enraged me with all these things. I will surely bring down on your head what you have done declares the sovereign lord did you not add lewdness to all your other detestable practices i mean honestly the only thing that i have problems with here is the child sacrifice right yeah the rest of it is your choice man you yeah. know like whatever whatever when, when you when you like i mean like most of what we rail against that the bible inspires people of today to do is things that inflict um their ideas on other human beings, right? Harming others. And thus, like, much of what we care about that the Israelites did um, that was bad, that God views as bad, mm -hmm. are things that they inflicted on other people, which was generally child sacrifice, right? right. That was th that, and and when they warred against other, other factions, mm -hmm. those were the only times we really had issue with the Israelites themselves. Right. So, I, yes, when that, I, it, it just, like, I can't stand it. So it's just, it is what it is. So I, I don't know where oh, I was going. I lost my complete train of thought. There. I know. I'm like looking at you and you're so irate that you're like covering your eyes and you lost all your words. Yeah. yeah. You're like everything sucks. <laughs> I mean, basically everyone who quotes proverbs will quote this proverb about you like mother, like daughter. Ooh. Whatever. Oh, okay. You yeah. are a true daughter of your mother who despised her husband and her children. And you are a true sister of your sisters who despised their husbands and their children. 
Your mother was a Hittite and your father an Amorite. And smell of all the berries. Your older sister was Samaria, who <laughs> lived to the north of you with her daughters. And your younger sister, who lived to the south of you with her daughters, was Sodom. You not only followed their ways and copied their detestable practices, but in all your ways, you soon became more depraved than they. Okay. You were worse than all them people that you're related to I, that I just I mentioned. I guess, yeah. Somehow. I, these things just keep, like, I mean, it's so funny to me. Not funny. But it's it's crazy how we talk about how bad they are. And then he's just like, and all I got to do is just kill you and embarrass you. And then you're going to be back to normal again. Yep. Like, it, it's such an easy fix in his mind. He's just got to kill and embarrass you. Yeah. You know, kill, kill you real bad. But, you know. Yeah. But not before I embarrass you. Right. Gonna embarrass you, strip you first, embarrass you. Yeah. And then kill you. Right, right. Except for a couple of you. I got to keep a couple of you around to keep making fun of. Right, yeah. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, your sister Sodom and her daughters never did what you and your daughters have done. Now, this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before me. Therefore, I did away with them as you have seen. Samaria did not commit half the sins you did. You have done more detestable things than they and have made your sisters seem righteous by all these things you have done. Hmm. Damn. Wow. He's like, <clears throat> I hate you. I hate you. Yeah, I you hate guys you are so the, hard. Like, you guys are worse than the worst, apparently. You're just, you're awful. You're the worst. I hate you. Right. Bear your disgrace, for you have furnished some justification for your sisters. Because your sins were more vile than theirs, they appear more righteous than you. What is a suck contest? Yeah, I don't... I, right? Yeah. Like, you suck more than they did, and they sucked. Right. Like, are there degrees of, like, how much you hate us, I guess? I, I guess. Yeah, I... I <sighs> hmm. I don't, I don't really know, like, I, I get it, right? Like, God is constantly going off about how much he hates the Israelites. Like, mm -hmm. that's like the one constant in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems like every time we get into some new book, there's like a one-upping of how much he hates them this time versus right. the other time, right? Right. And it just feels like this is one of those things where he's like, well, let's we got to make them look this much worse because we've already covered some pretty bad shit already. So yeah. let's make them that much worse. Well, and that's how they did their, their uh, communicating, their comparisons yeah. back then. They, they literally did. In order to make something seem big, they had to, it couldn't just be big, they had to be giants. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, sure. So then be ashamed and bear your disgrace, for you have made your sisters appear righteous. However, I will restore the fortunes of Sodom and her daughters, and of Samaria and her daughters, and your fortunes along with them, so that you may bear your disgrace and be ashamed of all you have done in giving them comfort. Wee! <laughs> And your sisters Sodom with her daughters and Samaria with her daughters will return to what they were before. And you and your daughters will return to what you were before. You would not even mention your sister Sodom in the day of your pride before your wickedness was uncovered. Even so, you are now scorned by the daughters of Edom and all her neighbors and the daughters of the Philistines, all those around you who despise you. I'm so back and forth on this. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You no, I, suck. I hate you, but I'll save you. But you still suck, and you suck worse than them. But also, them. you were prostituting to them, or, or something. I don't. I don't. Right? You know. Like, what? But they also hate you. But you were giving them free sex, and what? Yeah. Like what? This is just all over the fucking Can place. Can you just stop going off for a minute? Can you just talk? Yeah. Just talk. Right. You will bear the consequences of your lewdness and your detestable practices, declares the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will deal with you as you deserve, because you have despised my oath by breaking the covenant. The, the, the covenant. The covenant that was made with their grandfathers. Yeah, right. And great grandfathers. Yeah, that, that he hasn't really, also that he hasn't really specifically laid out to them. Right. Which, even in one of the previous chapters in Ezekiel, he was like, I'm going to tell them, all these things after, like, to make them better after they get destroyed. Yeah, I'm going to tell them these things so that they're they're good people again. Right. And like, why didn't you do that before? 
Why didn't you come to them before? You've had, right. you know, thousands and thousands of years to discuss who you are, what you want as a God to these people that are your people. Why haven't you done that? You know, this gets into parenting. Yeah. Like, no, definitely. Like, do you just always tell your kid everything that they're doing wrong and how much you hate them? Obviously not. If you do, you're a shitty parent, and you should probably stop listening right now and get yourself into some good family therapy. Yeah. Because you suck. Right, right. <laughs> um, you know, if, if you're not happy with the choices your child is making, you bear some of, while they're minors particularly, you bear some of the responsibility for the choices that they're making and why they're making them. And you should start talking to them yeah. and telling them Communication. your expectations. Communication is key. Right? Yeah. Like, you don't just wait until they're like 18 and then be like, now that you're 18, I decided I'm going to tell you all the ways that you suck and I'm going to embarrass you and I'm going to cut you off and I'm going to, you know, tell you how much you suck and blah, 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 blah. Oh, but someday there's an inheritance for you, but don't talk to me between now and then. Bye. <laughs> Like, what? What is happening right now? Right. That's what I feel like this God is doing. Yeah, yeah. He, like, waited till he turned 18 and then just started screaming at them. Yeah. After being an absentee father. Absolutely true. Yeah. It's bullshit. I agree. Yet, I will remember the covenant I made with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Okay. Oh, again. Right. Okay. All your sure. covenants seem to come to nothing, really. Right, yeah. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed when you receive your sisters, both those who are older than you and those who are younger. I will give them to you as daughters, but not on the basis of my covenant with you. So I will establish my covenant with you and you will know. That my name is the motherfucking Lord. That I am the motherfucking Lord. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then when I make atonement for you for all you've done... You will remember and be ashamed and never again open your mouth because of your humiliation, declares the Sovereign Lord. The mm. end. So you're going to be silent the rest of your life because of, you were humiliated? And yeah. you're going to be you're going to be just wonderful people because you, you recognized your humiliation because God showed it to you because he destroyed you. And, oh, wait, wait, he also hacked you to pieces. Right. Yeah. Um, um, good stuff. Good stuff. If they're going to be full of regret, they're going to be full of regret that their God is so cruel, not at the things that they've done. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I don't I don't really know how to feel about this chapter other than I don't like it. I it's it's very like it's so like they, it's heavy on the symbolism. Right. Yeah. And obviously it's talking about the exact same things. We've been talking about up to this point, mm -hmm. God's going to destroy the fuck out of them, going to spread them to different cultures and, and whatever, and people are going to laugh at them. They're all going to laugh at you. They're you all going to laugh at yeah, me. They're yeah. all going to laugh at me. And uh, That's an Adam Sandler reference. Right. No, yeah, for sure. Just for those who don't yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and, 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 of course, we have to bring misogyny into the mix because why not? We have to make women look like they're pieces of shit mm -hmm. because that's how we describe bad things is in your, your, you damn women. You damn women. Right. You know, like you could almost rename the Bible, you damn women. Right. You know, so I don't know. It, uh, I'm, I, I was, I was happier with the, uh, the multiple eyeballs on the wheels. <laughs> Can we go back to your, we, weird wanna, we want more eyeballs on wheels. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Do we got anything else to, to go over today or was that the gist of it? That was not just the gist of it. That, that, was, that was the, the whole fucking thing. Okay. Yeah. So that was Ezekiel chapter 16. Sure as fuck was. And we will be back tomorrow on our live Discord, correct? Mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. yes. With? Chapter 17 of Easy Kyle. That's right. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Hey, wife. I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. 
We have podcast themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.